It is my pleasure to introduce Christoph Scherl, uh, Assistant Professor of Research of Biology and Facility Director of the Brown Genomics uh, Corps. And so, Christoph, please take it away. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for the invitation to speak today. So, um, I'm going to talk a bit about next generation sequencing today and why we do this. Um, so, the there are a few major advantages which um, next generation sequencing offers. Um, it's the ease of use, the speed at which the reactions and the sequencing occurs, as well as the flexibility of how many cycles you can sequence. And um, that results in, in a high throughput uh, mode for sequencing of uh, nucleic acids. So the great thing about next generation sequencing is also that any nucleic acid can be sequenced. So if, for example, you have um, an organism which is uh, collected somewhere in the deep sea of the Pacific Ocean, uh, as long as you can isolate nucleic acids, you can get information about the RNA and the DNA of this organism um, because you don't need, for the sequencing method, you don't need any prior knowledge about the organism. Just a quick introduction of the uh, instrument which we have at Brown. Um, so we have an Illumina NextSeq 550, which is a benchtop sequencer. And um, on the left, you can see a flow cell, which is used for the actual sequencing. So you can see there are four lanes on the flow cell. However, the flow cell has only one injection port and one ejection port for the fluid and for the sample. So each flow cell is one contained experiment in itself. Um, you can run multiple samples on a flow cell if you do multiplexing, but it's only one user per experiment. And so you can, the flow cells come in two different uh, flavors. One is a high output flow cell and the other one is a mid output flow cell and you can see the difference in the output. So um, with a high output, you get about 120 gigabyte basis of data and then with the mid output, you get about a third of that. Um, this is how the um, how the sequencer looks like. The flow cell is uh, inserted here. There's a buffer chamber here, and then there's a reagent cartridge here. And this is a touch screen which runs the sequencer. Um, once it's started, uh, it's running automatically. The data is getting pumped to the Illumina cloud. And from there, it can be made available to the user, um, to the end user, um, and through enable sharing. So uh, I just want to give you a quick example of uh, how sequencing here at Brown, how much it costs. So under optimum um, circumstances, you can get 400 million reads. And if you choose to do a paired end read, that will multiply by two. Uh, however, the 400 million reads are 400 million independent clusters. If you do the uh, reverse side, uh, the paired end sequencing, that's not 800 million independent clusters, it's still 400 million clusters. So if you do 150 base pair uh, cycle of sequencing for the forward and the reverse, um, so you have 150 base pairs and that end gets you about 120, um, 120 gigabases of um, sequencing. So the human genome in contrast is three times 10 to the nine, so you get about a 40X coverage or you can get a 40X coverage uh, under best circumstances with a high output flow cell. So the pricing, uh, if you took um, the different components together, so the sequencing kit in the high output version costs about $4,617. Um, quality control is about $50. The instrument use is $220. And then in library prep depends on which reagents you use is about $100. So you end up with about $5,000 for the 40X coverage. Um, so a quick overview of how the sequencing actually works. So as yes, an input, you can have any nucleic acid and that in nucleic acid is turned into a double-stranded DNA library. Before sequencing, the double-stranded DNA library is denatured to single-strand molecules and then the sequencing happens and then uh, you get an output output file, which is the so-called BCL file, which is a raw data file, and then that is converted into um, an analysis analysis file, which is a fast queue file. And so the blue part is what's always the same in every single sequencing. What is different is the input and how you get to the library. So there are all these different seeks 
and you probably have heard quite about uh, quite a bit about chip seek and exome seek and whole genome sequencing and so on and so on. Um, there are tons of different seeks available, and you can choose whatever works best for your experiment. Um, so it's basically a selection and an enrichment method uh, of nucleic acids using molecular bio biology methods to get a better grip uh, uh, on the question you want to ask for your research. And that reduces complexity as well as the cost for the sequencer. Because if you sequence something which you're not really interested in, that just adds complexity and unnecessary cost. So um, a little bit more detail now about the library prep. So you can start with RNA or DNA. If you start with RNA, you first need to convert the RNA to DNA. Uh, you end up with a DNA molecule and that molecule is then fragmented and you can use either um, an enzyme or you can use mechanical um, fragmentation such as uh, ultrasonication. Um, and a lot of people do that. We have a, a, a very precise ultrasonicator here in the core facility, uh, which can give you very precise sonication fragments. And then uh, after the fragmentation, there's a so-called end repair um, step where you add on the five prime and the phosphate group and on the three prime end, uh, the uh, adenosine monophosphate. And um, after the end repair, you add the adapters. And this is why you actually can sequence any nucleic acid because the adapters are what is actually the sequence is known and that's where the sequencing actually uh, gets started from. After the adapter ligation, there's a cleanup step to remove excess adapters. And then there's a um, amplification step using PCR to actually uh, increase the number of DNA molecules before the uh, sequencing actually occurs. Um, so once the library has been made, um, this is a schematic representation of a library molecule. So you have the adapters on either side and the black is a DNA insert of interest, which is immobilized to the flow cell using uh, some mechanism which is encoded through the adapters. Um, so in the first read, um, you have a sequencing primer which binds to the single-stranded DNA molecule and that is used as a starting point for the sequencing reaction going in forward in this direction. And this can be a 75, 50 base pairs, 75 base pairs, 100 base pairs, 150 base pairs, um, depending on what you choose. <clears throat> Most people nowadays use uh, multiplex samples and using multiplex samples, um, you have the so-called barcode and um, that allows you to distinguish after the sequencing different samples. Um, so there's primer for the sequencing and then you have either six or eight base pairs um, sequencing cycles after the first primer read to determine the sequence of your um, sample to allow for demultiplexing after the run. Then something happens which is called a turnaround and um, then you use a second primer, second sequencing primer to uh, start the reading in the other direction if you choose to do a pad end sequence. So the summary is here. First, the clustering, which is the mobilization and amplification of a molecule on the flow cell. Read one, the index read, the turnaround, and then read two. And so um, with the next seek instrument, which we have on campus, you can sequence up to 300 base pairs, and you can sequence either in single read mode or in paired end read mode. Um, and you can choose the length of your read as long as it's 300 base pairs. So you could theoretically do 290 cycles in one direction and 10 in the other direction or whatever works for you. Um, before we do the sequencing, there's a quality control step um, and that's actually really important. So this is an example of a library which was submitted. Um, this is actually a sample which wasn't very good because there's a uh, significant contamination with the adapter still left, um, which is really not very good. So um, also there's a pretty broad distribution of the sample, um, which can also be problematic, doesn't necessarily have to be, but can be problematic. Um, what really is, what we aim for is a nice clean library where there's no adapter contamination and a fairly, um, lim fairly um, narrow size distribution of the library. Um, so we get an average size, library size from this uh, fragment analyzer experiment and then we combine that with qPCR 
to calculate very exactly the concentration of the library because that's really important that you don't overcluster or undercluster um, the flow cell. Um, so we, the qPCR gives us an average nanomolar concentration. We correct that uh, with the base pair and then we add up with the cor corrected adjusted size. Um, another important thing is that diversity of the library is critical. So if your library is all the same, um, then um, it looks a bit like that, that in the first cycle when it's sequenced, everything is, let's say, A, and then everything is G, T, and C, and um, you end up with the sequence. Um, that is actually a problem because the software uses the first few cycles to establish the ma matrix where the different clusters are, and if they're all the same, then the software doesn't know where cluster starts and where it ends. So what you really want is something like uh, a diverse turnout. So if you look at the first two reds here, in the next cycle, they're blue and yellow, and then they're yellow and blue, and then they're red and blue again, and so you get a diverse sequence, and the software can then determine individual clusters much better. Um, just a quick, Note about um, other instruments which are available and technologies available in the um, genomics core. So if you're interested in any of these, um, there's much more information on the genomics core website. You can also email me or call me. I'm happy to discuss uh, any ideas for projects, use of instruments and so on you have. Um, and yeah, that was, was just a quick introduction and um, I'm open for questions now and discussion. <laughs>